Hi everyone, it's Joe Esty here with Parody So Presents, and today I wanted to give you the recorded version of our webinar uh, on agency branding and website design. Now, initially, we had planned to go over both of these subjects with this webinar. Um, we were going to talk about agency branding with this PowerPoint presentation, and then have a hands-on approach to agency website design. But we were a little bit short on on time when we originally hosted this live event. So what we've done is we've actually set up a second follow-up webinar, uh, which will be hosted next week on Wednesday. And what I've done is I've actually gone ahead to put the registration link for anyone interested. It is in the video's description below. You can register, register for that webinar for free for anyone who catches this video in time. But I wanted to put out this video for anyone who you know had signed up for our webinar and wasn't able to attend or what have you. So today we're gonna to focus on agency branding for your independent insurance agency. Let's get started. First, let's talk about your agency's brand. Uh, your brand is huge. It should be the focus of all of your marketing efforts, what's, whether it's digital marketing or traditional marketing with things like printouts, send outs, postcards, calendars, things like that. So we're going to talk about the difference between between a personal and an agency brand because each have their own unique strengths and they have a little bit of a unique approach as well into establishing uh, you know a personal versus an agency brand. And we're also going to talk about establishing a brand identity or how your audience visually interprets your brand. So let's get started with an agency brand first. A brand relates to how people feel about the company and it's about creating an overall rewarding customer experience. Now we're not just talking about the customer service that your agency provides in-house because everybody says that they provide a good or a great overall customer service which is important for your overall customer experience but the customer experience starts from the moment that your you know prospect identifies a need that your agency's products or services can help them or solve and it doesn't finish until the, the customer either decides to part ways with your agency or they're no longer doing business with your agency. So this is big. Your brand can help you capitalize on the customer experience as a whole. Uh, branding with, with your agency also is the emotional and psychological relationship between a company and its customers. Uh, this is very true. Your brand is earned over time through the interactions you have with your audience. Um, does the consumer trust the company? Is the consumer confident that the company will provide a quality product or service? Uh, your brand is what people think and feel when they experience your company and is also driven by elements such as naming, marketing strategy, advertising, public relations, market research, customer feedback, and other things of that nature. So let's talk about your personal brand and how it differs a little bit from your agency's brand. Uh, these two things are, are separate entities. Your agency's brand will focus on your customers and clients' interactions with your agency or how they interpret your agency. But your personal brand is more of who you are specifically as an individual agent or broker. Um, so in this case, we will discuss the differences between Paradiso Insurance's brand and Chris Paradiso's personal brand. So with his personal brand, we have ChrisParadiso.com. It's a website that focuses on Chris's personal brand. I would encourage you to check it out if you're looking to establish your own personal brand as a broker or agent. Um, but it's what makes you unique and what makes you successful. So with Chris's personal brand, we focus on how he is a small business and insurance agency owner. We talk about how he's an insurance marketing entrepreneur and that he teaches marketing in the insurance space through Paradiso Presents. We also focus on the fact that he's a family man, he puts his family before everything, and that he's an active member in our community because he's doing his best to put Stafford Springs and Connecticut on the map as a whole. Now, when you're establishing your personal brand, you want, you want to think about uh, what you want to focus on because it's very powerful. You need to send a consistent message about who you are and what you have to offer. That way people know what it's like to do business with you one-on-one -on -one as an individual and they, they get a good idea of how you can help them out before they go to sit down to talk with you. Um, you also want a strong, authentic personal brand because that'll help you become known for what you're good at and sets you apart from the competition, which is big because you could look at yourself as a niche or a niche expert as we like to call it depending on where you're from and this is going to set you as set you up as the the one professional that people are going to trust for what you have going on in your area of expertise. Now, 
To establish a personal brand, we have a few questions you may want to ask yourself. Uh, so the first one is, what am I an expert on? You know, uh, what can I promise to people that work with me? And what is the core message I am expressing? These are a few questions you want to ask yourself to, um, you know, not only establish your personal brand but establish trust with your personal brand, uh, because people will be more inclined to work with you if you are giving them reasons to trust you and consistently giving them reasons to trust you. You'd also ask, does my core message line up with my beliefs? Who are my customers and clients and how well do I know them? And does my core message resonate with my customers and clients? That's important because if you don't have a brand established, you won't be able to resonate within your, with your audience. You can make a first impression, it could be a great first impression, but you want an impression that will resonate with them because you want to be able to generate more word of mouth referrals. And if you're backing all of your marketing efforts with a strong, consistent, and powerfully established brand, you'll be able to resonate because your message will stick with them over time. They'll have mental triggers and connotations that are associated with your agency's brand or your personal brand. And when, when a problem or a need arises with someone that's close to them, such as a family member or a friend, your brand has the ability to resonate with your audience and you'll see more word of mouth referrals being generated because they'll be more apt to talk about your agency when the time comes. Moving on, a couple more personal branding questions. Do I have a value proposition and does my value proposition need tweaking? And what makes me unique through what I teach, what I'm about, or how I deliver? Now these are important and if you're not already thinking about things like concepts like a value proposition or if you do have a value proposition and it may need some tweaking or upgrading, uh, we have actually put out an entire article on Chris Paradiso's LinkedIn. It's a LinkedIn publication um, that focuses on value propositions, how to improve them and what you could think, what concepts you want to think about while making your successful value proposition. Um, so I'll go ahead and again I'll link that in the video's description below. You can access the LinkedIn publication that we speak on value propositions on. Next you want to establish a brand identity for your agency. Um, with establishing a brand identity, this is how you're going to visually establish your brand. So that way when people see your content appearing in their news feeds on their, on their social networks, or if they get a mail send out like a calendar or a postcard, they'll immediately recognize your brand and know that the products or services are coming from your agency. So first, we want to look at the physical elements the company uh, works together that customers can come in contact with. So this is, uh, you know, like as you can see in our picture over here, we have the logo and we have one of our branded textures. Uh, it's, a, it's our branded blue with, we have a few textures such as this uh, is a, like a leather looking texture behind our logo here that we consider to be in brand as part of our marketing branding guidelines. Um, we have a whole visual set of guidelines, not to go too far off topic here, but we have a whole visual set of branding guidelines that we actually spoke to an outsourced branding professional about to establish for all of our marketing efforts. So essentially we have like a handbook and it's a, it's a set of guidelines that tells us how we can keep everything consistently in visual branding. And whenever we sit down, me or my partner Julia sits down to make photoshopped visuals or uh, you know visual content marking for our agency, we follow the guidelines from start to finish to keep our brand consistent with our audiences you know, whenever they see it popping up in their social media. So what we would suggest is that you do establish a set of branding guidelines for either your marketing team or whoever's creating your visual content marketing uh, efforts. And you should talk to an outsourced professional. If you need any suggestions, by all means, feel free to reach out to myself or Chris Paradiso. I'll include our contact information in the video's description as well. Now, you want to strategically and consistently apply your well-defined business image to generate top-of-the-mind recognition in your target audience. And that's crucial because if you can strategize and keep your brand consistent in all of your visual content marketing, you're going to leave a, uh, you know, like I said, you'll be able to resonate with your audience. So if the message behind it is something that your agency needs to push out and it needs to stick with your audience so you can get the message to more people, you'll be able to resonate by having a strong brand but you know backing that message
Now, the identity offers the observer distinguishing characteristics that separate it from other similar businesses. This is important because if you see similar uh, you know, content coming from other insurance agencies in your area, you want to be able to clearly distinguish what's coming from, you know, let's say in our example, uh, what's coming from Paradiso Insurance versus what's coming from ABC Insurance from down the street. We want to be able to resonate strongly with our audience and have our message being the, the message that they think about when they think about insurance products or services. Last, uh, we have identity can be represented by a logo, business card, email signature, websites, advertisements, office layouts, and etc. And you'd see if you took a uh, if you took a walk around Paradiso Insurance's office, you'll see our brand present in all of our traditional marketing efforts. Um, we have little stands that talk about our mobile app on each and every agent's desk, which we have visually branded as well. Uh, we have our calendars that are you know all over the office. They are all in brand. And right down to our business cards, everything is in brand from start to finish. All right, next I'd like to quickly define what a brand is specifically. And it is the relationship between an organization and an audience. And it's something that you have to earn over time. So anytime an audience either interacts with you know employees at your agency, or they're checking out your social media, or they even receiving an e email marketing campaign, all of it should speak to your brand because you need a consistent message that you're pushing out that is always branded to your agency's branding guidelines. So let's talk about these examples that I've included on how you can visually see our brand um, with some of the stuff we have going on online with our digital marketing plan. So first on this example all the way to the left we have a picture that we pushed out to social media which we took into Photoshop and did a little touching up with. First, we put in our logo in the upper left-hand corner. Then you can see the box in the middle here. Uh, the blue box is what we call one of our branded design elements. We have a set of these elements. As you can see in uh, the two visuals on the right, we have two other shapes there. We have a set of shapes that we call our design elements that we consider in-brand. And whenever we're crafting visuals, we only select shapes that we consider in-brand that we included in our branded design elements that we have saved on file. So we have our design element there, it's in our branded blue, and we have our branded fonts too. You can see we have one branded cursive font, and one we have that's more of a standard branded font, and we are consistent with only using those two fonts in all of our marketing efforts. And, and it has a quick message, it says comfortable, when you understand what you're purchasing, you feel more comfortable selecting insurance options that fit your needs. Um, this is big because this is also part of our parody so promise. This is one of our promises example. And basically the parody so promises are 12 promises that we put in place for all of our customers, clients, and or prospects that we promise to them anytime they interact with our agency, we will stick to our promises and make their customer experience as the best experience we can make for them. So this is just one thing that's part of our brand and I'd be happy to link you to um, you know the parody so promises online that will also be available in the video's description below but some of our as uh, some aspects of our brand that are covered in these uh, visuals here is that we are part of the community as you can see in the middle of visual that is a visual from uh, a picture that was taken during last year's flag day campaign where we essentially allow our customers and clients to come into our office with an old American flag and we replace it with a brand new American flag at no charge to them and then after that, we have uh, supporting our veterans and our troops and shopping small and local. As you can see uh, in the upper right hand visual, we have a blog cover sample that we use in our visual content marketing. And it says four reasons to shop small this holiday season because we're huge supporters as shopping small, shopping local through you know an independent agent right here in Stafford Springs. So that's a big part of our brand as well. And you can see uh, you know supporting troops with the blog that we wrote about the true meaning of Veterans Day, which is also visually uh, branded using our branding guidelines as well. Next, let's talk about how you can make the most of branding through social media. Social media is a great way to connect with your customers, clients, and prospects, your audience as a whole. Um, but it needs a balanced attack. You can't just push out insurance services or products on a constant basis because people won't think it's personable. They won't be apt to connect with your agency online. Um, so we're going to talk about how you can have a balanced attack of social media between posting about insurance products or services versus posting organic content like photos of your staff members in-house 
um, helpful tips or advice for your customers and clients, as well as pushing out branded material so that way you're always pushing your agency's brand. So first, let's talk about Facebook because Facebook is the number one social media network uh, at least at the time I'm making this video with the most active users on a daily basis and it's got a built-in uh, you know boosting so you can do pay-to-play marketing online and all that great stuff it's pretty much your all-in-one stop for social media so with Facebook um, concerning branding you're going to have an agency page and a personal page and what I mean by that is your agency page in our scenario would be Paradiso Insurance while the personal page would be Chris Paradiso um, I know a lot of you probably have either one, the other, or both, um, but basically you use the personal page to log into Facebook and then you can access the agency's page to manage all of your admin administrator controls on the agency or the company's page. So you're going to have a bit of differences with your branding. Like we said, there's a difference between a personal brand and an agency brand where if you're accessing your personal page, you want it to speak to your personal brand, of course. Um, but the thing, the thing here that's different about traction and engagement with your audience online on Facebook is it's a lot easier to get traction to your personal brand. Because like we said, with an agency brand, you have to earn trust, you have to earn your brand as a whole over time, and it takes consistent uh, pushing of the same you know, branded messages, branded visuals, and things like that. While a personal brand is a lot easier to connect with. And I'll show you a quick example here. With personal branding, um, these are some posts that you can see that come right from Chris's Facebook. Um, so we're we're talking about his personal brand. You know how he's he shops local. He's he supports the community, um, and he's a family man. Things like that are all part of Chris Paradiso's personal brand. So we have a visual on the left here with um, Mia and Chris. Mia is his daughter, of course, and it says, "Dad, a daughter's first love." And then on the right, we have a quick shot of Mia and Gianni on their eighth birthday. They are twins, so they share a birthday. And you can see with just this screenshot alone on the right here, this picture of them, the, the two kids at their birthday, actually got over 260 likes total. And there's no boosting involved. There's no marketing budget involved there because you can't pay for personal Facebook posts. You can only pay to boost a company page's posts. But that got a serious amount of traction with Chris's personal network because it's touching on his personal brand. Now let's see how that changes a little bit when you're working on your agency's page. First and foremost, when you take a look at our agency's Facebook page, you can see our brand shouting at you right, right as you uh, first show up. So in our upper banner, this is called our cover photo, we have keeping you moving forward. And with this cover photo and with the profile picture here, we have our branded elements, our, our design elements being the red shapes, and they are in our branded red color. We always use the same branded colors each time we're working with our uh, digital marketing effort designing. Um, we have our branded fonts. Keeping you moving is in our standard font. And forward, you can see our cursive branded font coming out as well. And then we have a filter that we used while designing this photo. We put on a filter to make it look like it's got a little bit of a, nostal a nostalgic, dreamy feel to the picture, which is also part of our visual branding guidelines. So let's take a look at how we can capitalize on specific branding moments through uh, the Paradiso Insurance Facebook agency page. First, we have our customer testimonials. Customer testimonials are great for our agency's brand because we're huge on providing the best customer experience as well as you know caring for our local community and that all kind of ties together here. So we have uh, you know, a customer, a customer testimonial visual that our marketing team put together here. You can see the design element. You can see our logo there and our two branded fonts like I was mentioning to you. The design element is, uh, is in our branded blue as well. Um, so this is a great way for us to push our brand and also backlink um, you know, our, our website because we have a testimonial portion of our website. So you can say, see what else our customers are saying and link to that portion of our website in case anyone wants to check out our other reviews. Now, I wanted to direct you to a certain part of this screenshot though here. If you look at the bottom, you can see that we reached uh, 1,528 people here, but then you see an orange bar and the first part of the bar is a very light orange and the second part is a very dark orange and there's a button that says view results. This is all talking about a Facebook boost. So this is a post that we actually boosted already or put money into to reach a wider audience. Um, so on the second screenshot, you can see there's a button to boost post in the bottom right hand corner. 
that post was not boosted yet at the time but with this first left hand screenshot you can see that the post boost actually is already finished up so the white bar the white orange bar is uh, basically what the uh, what audience the boost the boosted post reached without the boost the organic reach of this post and the dark orange is what the post reached after the boost so the, the thing that's important here is you can always reach your organic reach or people directly within your network um, with your branded visuals of course but if you brand take the time to properly brand a visual uh, you know all, your brand is present in all aspects of the visual from start to finish and then you boost the post now instead of just reaching customers and clients with your brand you're actually reaching potential customers and clients or prospects in the process because you've reached people outside of your network by boosting a branded post so this is all important to think about in the second screenshot we have a one of our business partners like I said we're huge supporters of shopping local and shopping small right here in Connecticut so we have a partner program where essentially we have business partners here in town that we have established connections with and our marketing team in-house will create blogs create visuals and even at times create videos for our partners and we'll post them to our social networks online now the power behind our partner program is uh, almost infinitely great because it is cross marketing which is essentially free ROI so the concept and the strategy behind it is we created the content then what we did is we posted the content to Paradiso Insurance with a small message you know we said Jay Fierick photography specializes in weddings portraits events and commercial photography she takes all of our professional shots and we love her service and what we do is we use a couple of hashtags to um, you know we had hashtag Connecticut hashtag photographer to kind of expand the reach of the post to people outside of the network who would be looking for a Connecticut photographer and then we, we include a visual that we crafted for uh, this photography company here in-house by using one of her pictures and then our branded fonts and this touches on both our brand as well as Jay Fierick Photography's brand. And what we can do here is since we tagged her in the post, now anyone who's connected to Jay Fierick Photography will now see this. So we're reaching an, a whole new network just by doing a simple partner promotion post for Jay Fierick Photography. We're putting Paradiso Insurance in front of Jay Fierick Photography's entire network. So that's huge because it's, it's, free, it's free ROI through the power of cross-marketing. Next, we have our Paradiso Promises campaign, which is also a great part of our uh, agency's brand. Like I said, we're huge on the customer experience. We want to be, you know, not just give you a, a good customer experience, but the best customer experience overall. And so we have our promises in place that we follow with all of our customers who interact with our agency. So we did use a couple of hashtags. We did use a backlink that goes to the promises online, like I said, because uh, you know it's a great way to push traction towards your agency's website. The visual is in brand. You can see our, our, our branded design element and our branded red with our branded fonts, like I mentioned earlier. And it's got a little bit of a filter for the dreamy, nostalgic feel. And it also ha features one of our staff members. So that, that has uh, you know touched up on our brand in multiple ways, not only visually, but also with the message as well. And then moving over to the right here, we have a quick visual about military appreciation. This is something that we put out on Valentine's Day, uh, this last Valentine's Day that passed, where we essentially had, um, you know, this touches on our brand visually because it does have our, it, it is branded according to our visual guidelines with our element, our font, our logo, and that sort of thing. And we increase the traction on the post using the relevant hashtags. And this touches to our brand because we're huge supporters of supporting our veterans and supporting our troops. So we wanted to give our customers a little something to give back to our troops and veterans. Um, so this is essentially like a postcard that you could send during Valentine's Day. But the thing that's great about it is if any of our customers are using this, it's free for them, but it also has our logo. So now we're pushing out our brand through tradi traditional offline printed marketing aspects as well by giving our customers a you know something that's that's tangible it's a physical printout and it's something that they can send on and it's essentially providing free referrals for your agency now let's take a look at uh, some organic pictures some pictures of our staff in our office you can see we have a happy Monday morning picture on the left 
because we're all about being, you know, we're all about being real time. We're about having a balanced attack on Facebook, like I mentioned. You can't just push out uh, insurance products or services 100% of the time. You have to be personable in your approach. So we'd like to take real pictures of our office, uh, you know, our team, our staff, and even our mascot, Max. So you can see, um, you can see a picture of myself and Max in the second uh, example over here. And we just said, you know, caption this. Who can come up with the funniest caption for this photo of Joe and Max? Just trying to kind of provide something that's a little more uh, of an entertainment piece. Um, we, we wouldn't do 100% of those types of posts, of course, because we also do posts like tips or advice for our customers and clients to, you know, avoid claims or better run their business or things like that. Um, but we also have some personal, uh, personable posts that make us more, makes our audience more apt to connect with our agency online. Because like we said, we have to earn their trust through consistent branding over time. Next, we have a post that is a blog on our website. Um, this is something that we do twice a week for our, our customers and clients. We are consistent for what days of the week we post our blogs as well as, um, you know, they are up at the very, the, uh, the very beginning of the day. So that way if customers or clients are looking for them on the days that we post, they can check them out on our website. But then we share the links to the blog onto our Facebook. We use the relevant hashtags like I mentioned earlier and you can see it is visually branded. It's got our agency's filter. It has our agency's logo and our design elements and our branded font. And that's just tips essentially for any of our, uh, you know, our eight, this is an ATV essential blog. So any of our ATV riders out there, they can essentially look at the, the essentials for what they'll need as well as we spoke about towards the end of the blog we tied it back into ATV insurance so that way we're pushing some advice but also saying hey if you need any help with your insurance you know we're the professionals you can count on as well and then lastly we have an example of a video that we would push out um, and this is this is an interesting concept here because with our marketing team's branding guidelines which by the way I have made available online if you'd like to take a look at our branding guidelines there will also be a descript uh, a link in the video's description below where you can access our full branding guidelines online take a look at how we visually brand um, you know any of our visual content marketing the tone of voice with our agency's brand our agency's branded message and you know anything else at the core of our agency's brand you can check it out uh, the full branding guidelines online but with videos, we have to consider what tone of voice we want to speak in, what the main message of the video is, or the subject or topic, as well as visually brand it using our, if we ever have font in the video, we will use our branded fonts. Um, we have our logo at the end of every video, which is, uh, uh, we actually hired an animation professional for maybe, I think it was, it cost us maybe $15 to animate our logo through a service called Fiverr.com, which I will also include in the description below for anyone curious about Fiverr. Um, but there's a lot of things to consider with branding video, and then you want to push out your video with a branded message. Uh, you know, we had said, if you are one of our customers, then this video goes out to you. Thank you for your ongoing business with our insurance agency. And that was a quick video that we did thanking all of our customers for you know, choosing to shop through Parity So Insurance, which also speaks to our brand as well with the overall customer experience. Next, let's talk a little bit about Google+. Now, with Google+, you are also going to have a personal page versus an agency page. So first, let's take a look at our agency's Google+, page. With this Google+, profile, there are several things, uh, several aspects of our brand immediately jumping out from you. And the first thing you'll be able to notice is that we have our Think Big, Shop Small. We're talking about shopping local and shopping small huge aspect of our brand but it's also visually branded using our design elements our branded gray color which we do have a branded gray as well our two branded fonts are right there in the design element one being the cursive and one being the standard you'll see our logo in the bottom left and then the profile picture the circle you'll see uh, three of our office members 
which uh, is huge for talking about the customer experience as part of our brand, as well as an American flag right behind them in our window that is speaking to the core of our agency's brand being the concept of the American dream. And now you can see it's going to look a little different for a personal Google Plus page. This all speaks to Chris Paradiso's personal brand. And you can see that you know he's with his kids here, he's a family man, and he's got the pictures of the American flags as his profile picture because he's a very strong supporter of the troops and our veterans. Although that's part of our agency's brand, it's also part of Chris Paradiso's personal brand as well. So with Google+, Plus, you can actually tailor your content to specific audiences. And this is something that we do by posting in what's called communities. To find a community, there's a search bar at the top of the page of Google+. Plus. You can just punch in a few keywords. So if we were looking for this military community, we would type we would have typed in military, and we would have seen this community by clicking on. Um, there will be in the search results you'll see communities in bold, and you can see a couple of groups that you can choose to join if they pertain to your agency's brand. So we wanted to push out, uh, you know, this branded visual on the left here. Let's take a look at this military community post, and what we did to brand this visual is. First, it's talking about supporting our veterans and our troops, so that automatically speaks to our agency's brand. But then what we did to visually brand this picture is we used our agency's nostalgic or dreamlike filter. We have our branded blue logo in our upper left-hand corner and our branded blue font in the bottom with a nice quote that says, this nation will remain the land of the free only so long as it is the home of the brave. Now, with this post, what we did is we posted under Paradiso Insurance's uh, you know, Google Plus account because this does speak to our agency brand. And we spread it to this specific community so it would get more traction and engagement online because there are people that this group is full of that are huge on military uh, appreciation since it's a military community. So they'll be more likely to engage this post. As you can see, it got 51 plus ones and it got 11 shares. Those 11 shares are huge because it's reaching people that are not in our direct network. And anytime they see this post, they'll see Paradiso Insurance. And just by mousing over Paradiso Insurance alone, they'll be able to see all of our agency's contact information, physical address, and website, and things like that. So in this right-hand example, uh, a huge part of our agency's brand is that we are huge supporters of classic cars. Now we provide classic car insurance tailored to meet your classic car's needs. So we posted this picture of a 1950 Chevrolet, and we posted it to the classic car community. We included some relevant hashtags to increase the traction on it. And as you can see, this community responded by giving us 77 plus ones and seven shares. So again, we reached seven whole networks that we're not directly connected to, and our agency's brand will be pushed out to all of those potential prospects who come across our posts in their social media networks. So here's a, quick, uh, here's a quick slide about finding communities. Like I mentioned, all you have to do is punch into the search, tar search bar up top the uh, you know, keywords or phrases on anything that touches up with your agency's brand. So we were looking for a classic car communities and you, we have a little arrow on screen pointing to where you'll see the communities down below and those are all groups that your agency could potentially join and then post to for getting the traction that you need online on Google+. Next, let's talk a little bit about Pinterest because Pinterest is a social network that is very powerful. If you're not already on, if your agency's not already on Pinterest, I would definitely suggest you sign up. The reason being, Pinterest users are actually 60% or more likely to make a purchase online than users on any other social network. And the thing about Pinterest is it's 100% visual content marketing, which is huge for establishing a brand identity. So let's take a look at Paradiso Insurance's Pinterest page first. Um, we have our Paradiso Insurance videos, Paradiso Insurance blog, the flags of Paradiso Insurance, and these are all things that are touching up on our agency's brand with the core message of each of these, what they're called, our boards. Boards on Pinterest are ways of organizing your content. So that way, if someone's looking for something a little more specific, such as like a military board, which we have on Paradiso Insurance's Pinterest, or if they're looking for something like one of our partner promotions, then they can find it by looking at that specific board. Um, now, the thing about Pinterest is we can brand all of these visuals. So you can see, if you look at the Paradiso Insurance blog, you'll see our branded design elements coming out and things like that. And you'll also see with the flags of Paradiso Insurance, we've got a troop right there holding an American flag. So you can not only touch up on your agency's 
core, uh, you know, the core of your agency's brand being the message, subjects, or topics that you choose to post about, but also visually brand all of your content like you would any any other social network. It's important to have not 100% branded visuals coming out because you want to have some organic photos of your staff or your team or your office, but a lot of it a lot of the time you can include visual branding on, you know, any of your posts coming towards Pinterest because it'll visually establish your brand identity through consistent branding online. So again, the thing that's powerful about Pinterest is you can again reach uh, people that are outside of your network like we did with Google Plus by getting shares, but Pinterest is a much, much stronger uh, share heavy network, meaning people share a lot more than any other social network on Pinterest specifically, because 80% of the users on Pinterest actually only log on to make shares, while the other 20% are the ones who are actually producing original content. So Paradiso Insurance would be one of the 20% of users who's putting out original content, and we're looking for those 80% of the other users to do what's called repinning our pins. So essentially a repin is when someone sees a pin and decides to share it to their entire network as well. So when you first click on a repin button, in case, you know, sometimes what we'll do is we'll come, the reason, the reason this screenshot's here is we came onto Pinterest. We searched for classic cars in the search bar, and this is one of the pictures that popped up here. So we decided to repin this post, and what it does is it allows you to quickly fill out a brief description of what you're pinning or sharing to your networks. So we typed in, you know, here's the, the, the make and model of this car, the year. It's a classic car, so that speaks to our brand. Um, so you can see 1928 McLaughlin Buick, and then we have the repin by Perry Sony. Paradiso Insurance, and we hashtag Classic Car Insurance, trying to increase attraction online through hashtags. And then we tagged our agency, so you can see at Paradiso Insurance, and we included a link to our, our agency's website. That way they can connect with us if they're looking. But this is the two-step strategy here on Pinterest. With Pinterest, when you first go to make a pin, you'll only be offered this one field, the description field of the pin. But if you revisit your pin and click on the edit button right at the top, you'll see this screen. So this is a screen with more options. By clicking edit again is how you get to this screen. You can now include the description box that we saw in the last screen, but you also have a website and place options as well. And here's, here's why this strategy is so powerful. First, you can link your website or a relevant web page. Like if you had a blog for the, for like with this example I have on screen, we have uh, the board it's going to is the Paradiso Insurance blog, and we have one of our branded blog covers, and this is a uh, article about do-it-yourself cleaning products. So we put out a quick blog about do-it-yourself cleaning products, um, you know, for when the spring first hit and people wanted to get their spring cleaning done, and we uploaded our blog cover to Pinterest, um, gave a quick description about what the blog is about, included the hashtags to increase the traction, then we have for the website in this in this scenario we link back our blog and a lot of the times with your pins you might just want to re uh, link back your your agency's website's homepage but in this in this case since this is a specific uh, a blog pin we we linked the web page that the blog is living on and then for the place we put Paradiso Insurance so that way if someone mouses over the pin or clicks on our pin they'll see our agency's phone number physical address, and all of our physical in information um, just by having Paradiso Insurance linked as the place of the pin. Now, like I said, 80% of Pinterest is just people who want to come onto the network to share or repin posts. So if you set up all of your pins the way we have with this example, you'll have, not only is it organized with a board and description, so that way people know exactly what they're looking at, but now you have your agency's website linked to the pin, as well as your phone number and physical address linked to your pin. And that's huge, because if people are sharing your pins to their networks, now if people see your pins, they can not only get in touch with you right there and then if they're interested in reaching out to your agency, but they can also check you out online and see if you know maybe your agency is worth looking up or doing business with. So you're reaching out to potential customers and clients by reaching prospects that are not directly in your network and all of your agency's information will be included on a branded visual. Next, let's talk about Twitter. Twitter's uh, a little simpler. There's less to think about. It's similar to Facebook, um, but it's not as 
uh, specific as Pinterest. So first we have our, our Twitter profile where we have our banner, our cover photo, and our profile picture, the square, the square picture as well. And with our banner, what we did is we included this visual about protecting the American dream. It's got the American flag in the background, which speaks to our brand. It's got our branded design elements and fonts, our branded red color for the design element. And that visual is just basically 100% branded to Paradiso Insurance following our branded guidelines. Then for our profile picture, you can see a picture of two of our ladies in personal lines standing with a happy customer in the middle. Um, and that's huge on talking about our brand with you know the overall customer experience. Now, we can also take a look at hashtags, links, and things like that using these two examples as a reference. First, let's take a look at this left one over here about the parody so promise. Um, we are pushing out our promises again because we're huge on providing the best overall customer experience and we make this commitment to all of our customers and prospect hashtag parody so promise because that's a, uh, a hashtag that we've been very consistent about with all of our social networks and then we have a small link that goes to our agency's website online talking about our, our parody so promises that we stick to with all of our customer and client interactions. Now on the right here we have a blog post uh, works the same as Facebook in this case. Um, you know, you are limited to 140 characters on Twitter, so you have to be very uh, selective with what you decide to include in your text. So we just quickly said, have you updated your home inventory lately? And essentially said, you know, had a couple of hashtags, Connecticut home, hashtag insurance, hashtag parody, so insurance. And this is a blog that we spoke about our, our agency's mobile app. And essentially you can create a home inventory of all your valuables in the app and send it right to your agent so that way it's on file in case anything were to ever go wrong. And you can see that with both of these visuals, we have visually uh, branded it to Par Paradiso Insurance's visual brand identity with the, the logo. We have our branded design elements, our branded fonts, and our branded colors are included as well. Now we have one more strategy we like to include on Twitter. Um, essentially we have, you know, this is another branded visual that we pushed out. It has our filter, the logo, design element, font, things like that. Um, and this is a branded visual we pushed out and then tagged people in our network on. Um, so you can see Happy Monday, and then we have you know at Robin, at uh, you know Toman, at Nancy, Nicklo. All those people are in our direct networks, and we say have a great day, and that gives them a notification. And you know it's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one touch point with getting your brand across. But you know this post will also be available to anyone else who's following you on Twitter as well. Um, we also have another thing that we do uh, on Twitter using this strategy, where if someone were to retweet us or share our tweets into their networks on Twitter, basically we have this visual that we created that is an in-brand visual that says thank you for the retweet. And what we'll do is we post that visual and tag anybody who's retweeted us that day at the end of each day as well just to kind of keep our brand consistent on this social network. Um, and I wanted to give you a quick side tip about Hootsuite.com. Uh, I'll include a link to this website in the description below. Uh, this is basically a uh, Twitter scheduling service. Um, it, it doesn't work just for Twitter. It works for many social networks, actually. We use this for Twitter primarily, though, because with, with Hootsuite, Sometimes people know about Hootsuite already, and they know that you're setting up your tweets to go out on a schedule. And this is Hootsuite, as, just long story short, Hootsuite, you can set up a schedule or a rotation of when you want your social network posts to go out. And then for the time you designate, Hootsuite will push it out then, even if you're not at your computer or you're not logged in or what have you. If you schedule a tweet to go out, then it will go out at the time you schedule through Hootsuite. It'll be an automated uh, version of using Twitter, essentially. So sometimes with certain social networks, you can see that posts were posted by Hootsuite and that could actually decrease the traction that that post is going to get because your network knows that you automated that social media update. So what we do is we will use it for Twitter because it doesn't hurt Twitter too, too much um, as far as metrics go, but it could hurt your Facebook posts. Facebook does have a built-in scheduling service and if you're, um, if you're familiar with using Facebook's scheduling service, uh, I, I would say there's nothing wrong with using Facebook scheduling because it does not hurt your metrics at all. But we do use Hootsuite to schedule through Twitter because like I said, branding needs to be consistent. And we can't be on social media 100% of the time. So for the time that we are around, we wanna make the most of it. So we actually set up a, a you know our whole afternoon or even evening sometime 
through Hootsuite to get tweets going out maybe every hour to hour and a half or so at our agency. And you know we can set up the message that we want to push out, include a visual, and include any relevant hashtags or link as well right through Hootsuite. So I'll include a link to Hootsuite.com in the video's description below. And just so anyone, if anyone's curious, um, it, Hootsuite is free for the first three networks that you plug into it, and after that, there's different options you can take a look at in your account settings to see, you know, what you want to pay for and what you want to get out of using this software. Last little tip I want to give, is, you know, a little side tip here is that you should claim your domain mains online. Um, and again, I don't work for Hootsuite to endorse them, and I don't work for uh, uh, this other service I use called GoDaddy. GoDaddy is a service that allows you to claim your domain main. So if no one owned www.chrisparadiso.com, we could look up that URL on GoDaddy.com and purchase it. So that way no one else can claim that link and we can use that website to build our own website. So essentially, um, GoDaddy.com is a service that you can search for URLs, see if they're available, and if they are available, you can purchase them. So I'll include a link to GoDaddy.com in the video's description below as well. Uh, let's just go over a few takeaways that you want to think about with your brand. Um, you want to think about how you begin to convey your brand to, to audiences that are not only within your customers and, and your clients, but also potential customers and clients or prospects outside of your networks as well. You want to establish both a personal and an agency brand because both have their own strengths, as, of course. You want to establish your brand identity and consult with a graphic designer because your, your, your brand will resonate with your audience once you have a visual brand identity because you'll be able to trigger mental connotations that'll, that will allow you to generate more word of mouth referrals. And if, again, if you need help looking for a graphic designer or professional branding expert, I would highly suggest you reach out to myself or Chris Paradiso and our, our contact information is in the video description below. Uh, you want to utilize social media to make to spread brand awareness and again that's a uh, you know you want to use multiple networks to get that across you want to find an email marketing system with a plan and by all means feel free to reach out to Chris to look for suggestions on e email marketing systems uh, you want to be consistent and improve on what's working best it's important to track me track metrics and analytics and things like that to see what's working and what's not uh, we're not going to focus about that too heavy today but we'll cover that on another day's uh, segment and establish full branding guidelines working with a branding professional. If you're not sure where to start, again, please feel free to reach out to us. Other than that, we will be going over agency website design coming up soon. If you're interested in the fundamentals that go into making a successful agency website, I would encourage you to sign up for our next webinar going on next week on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's going to be a, a great session. We're just going to have a hands-on approach talking about the Paradiso Insurance's brand new website here and all of the fundamentals and decisions that we made going into the design of this website. Other than that, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Be sure to give us a subscribe on YouTube if you're interested in taking a look at more insurance marketing content. And if you want to check us out online, our website is paradisopresents.com and I'll include our Facebook and Twitter in the video's description below. Other than that, agents and brokers, happy marketing. Thank <laughs> you.